As a technology, WebRTC offers real-time communications natively from a web browser. It is available in, on more, in all modern browsers, which makes it really powerful. WebRTC is also a media engine with JavaScript APIs. These APIs enable us to build whatever we want and port it from one browser to another. We need to understand and remember that WebRTC at the end of the day is just a technology. It is a building block and not a solution. We build our own solutions with WebRTC. How are calls made in WebRTC exactly? We've got here two users, Redhead and Brownhead. Redhead wants to start a session with Brownhead. He's going to send him a message, an offer, through the signaling server. This offer is then going to be routed to Brownhead. Brownhead received the offer and now he's going to answer it. This answer message is going to go back and routed through the server. These messages 1, 2, 3, and 4 are out of scope of WebRTC. WebRTC requires them in order to connect the call, but it doesn't state exactly how they need to be sent. It just says the component that, it needs, to be, that needs to be there, which is SDP, Session Description Protocol. Once these messages passed, the call can start. And that is done directly across the browser. This is how media is sent in WebRTC. There are three main APIs in WebRTC. Media capture, which allows us to gain access to the camera, microphone, and screen of the device that we are using. It is not exactly part of WebRTC, though it is needed if you want to actually communicate properly. You can use media capture without using the rest of WebRTC, and that enables us, for example, to take a headshot of a user for our own application. Peer connection does everything. It encodes and decodes the media, it sends things over the network, takes care of not traversal, packet losses, and everything else related to the communication between two participants. A data channel enables us to send arbitrary data directly between browsers, not only voice and video, but anything else that we want, providing us a low latency mechanism to send such data. There are other APIs as well that contribute to the use of WebRTC, but these are the main three. While the FAS, first of all, WebRTC is a free technology. It's open sourced, you can use it wherever you want and however you like. It is also targeting web developers and not voice over IP developers. This fosters a lot more creativity and use and adoption of WebRTC. WebRTC sit, sits at an intersection of two worlds. The world of voice over IP, how we communicate and make calls. And then the web, the internet that we use to browse the sites that we want. WebRTC is right there in the middle. If you know voice over IP, then you need to learn web to be able to use WebRTC effectively. And if you know the web, then you need to understand voice over IP in order to do the same. If you want to learn more, look at webrtcglossary.com for other terms related to WebRTC, or come join my training courses at webrtccourse.com. Thank you.